This is the continuation of our jungle video. Hope you enjoy. And what was what was actually nice about like in jungle when a rare was used, like so Hitmonchan was used in like a bunch of decks, but it was a rare hollow. At least like with jungle, you could <laughs> use all the non-foils too. Yeah, that's true. For that's your true. decks. Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have to break into any foils for any decks. No. Uh, I think we had we had a ton of non-foil scythers. Um Although I feel like you and you and I tried to use a lot of a lot of foil cards, or yeah, we thought they were cooler. Yeah, they were, absolutely were. So, all right, next is a fan favorite Snorlax. Uh, again, I don't think it was anything interesting about the card itself in the card game. It's just Snorlax, right? So yeah. We thought the Pokemon was cool. Um, I still think the Pokemon is cool just because uh, I. I have big plushes of him all in the kids' rooms. So. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you? Uh, didn't we look up recently that this card is actually worth a ton? I think it. The last oh. time I looked, it seemed to be the most expensive, like jungle. Uh, jungle, and probably because he's like the most popular character. Yeah. From jungle, so. Yes, I think Snorlax is generally a fan favorite, not just not just yours and the kids. Yeah, that's, the, that's I think that's right. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when we started this a couple months ago, the Pokemon fervor was very high, and uh, a lot of cards were going for, I think we were saying, like, 25 to 30% more than they are today. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, the PSA 10s, which, like, yeah. I don't know. We I don't, I feel like getting PSA 10s is super excessive. Yeah, uh, for a collector, but teach their own. All right, it's the last of the uh, OG evolutions, Vaporeon. Yeah, again, I think this was like the worst art. <laughs> like Vaporeon's just like chilling, where Flareon <laughs> and Jolteon are attacking. <laughs> um, I think that's right. So I do a, a stupid podcast with, with one of my friends and we talk about sports. And recently we um, we were like ranking the NFL logos. And like, that was one of the, what makes like a logo bad is like when it's an animal and it's just sitting there. Whereas like some of them are like attacking heads, right? So. Yeah, 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 that's, I think that's right. Yeah, this, this definitely doesn't uh, convey um, as much emotion or intensity as the other two do so yeah definitely wasn't one that stood out back then or stands out now so okay and i think outside of like the hollows um oh there's another one i didn't i, I didn't remember what was left we got a few more yeah, we got gotcha. more. these so turn them off yeah so again like i don't know you know of the original 151 like you know Pidgey, Pidgeot, <laughs> like uh, Venomoth, his evolution line, uh, or Venonat, like yeah. people that were not, unless unless it was going to be game changing in the game, I don't think they were going to be exciting cards to have. Or, right. Or no one was excited to pull up <laughs> Venonats and Venomoths. Yeah. And probably the same with Victory Bell, but here he is. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say, um, Probably the same with Vileplume, too. Oh. Uh, so I also went through an exercise of, like, memorizing the 151 Pokemon in order. And, like, these grass Pokemon that, like, no <laughs> one ever cares about are always the ones that, like, trip me up because I always forget that they exist. We'll wait until you get into to further generations. Yeah, I, don't know. I Yeah, I... I, I'm not <laughs> trying that at all. <laughs> yeah. So the last of the foils is Wigglytuff. Now I think um, Wigglytuff, there were some decks built around Wigglytuff. I think uh, she was also um, uh, complementary to some of the stall decks that, that came about uh, in Jungle as well. Yeah, just just one energy to put 
put the opponent to sleep. Looks yeah, and then, and then do the wave like you stall long enough to um, to get some guys on your bench and do you know forty to sixty damage potentially, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is a nice amount. I think the drawback for a lot of Pokemon, or at least in the from what I recall, like actually playing, not just reading up on it, because um, some of the guys that play or we're talking about the meta back then actually like revisited and said like actually these there were cards that are better than than we give them credit for back in the day but back in the day the decks like the haymaker or other decks that have had cards they there weren't very many that had a lot of evolutions so you know wigglytuff was only a stage two so it was relatively easy to get out versus Mm -hmm. um other decks uh or other evolutions that might take uh you know three cards to get out so uh, wasn't still wasn't too bad um, to have this card again. Wigglytuff also wasn't really a very popular Pokemon back in the day, or I don't know, maybe it is now. But not too crazy. I, I think it would be interesting, like if, and I don't know if they do this, but um, if they just like had tournaments for like you know the first say four sets <laughs> and see what what would come out of it today versus what came out of it you know yeah i think i think people do like blogs and youtube videos on like the meta back then you know i think it i'm not sure either if they do whole tournaments it might be an interesting thing to look into and see what happens because a lot of a lot of tournament play is also trying to do like counters to metas anticipating right because we did that i felt like we did that a lot later in our gaming careers whenever we were, we were like okay like 90 percent of the population is gonna play x deck like right. i will play this deck that counters that 90 percent. maybe i get tripped up but maybe it's easier for me to get to get through a bunch of yeah, yeah. top 16 top eights right whatever okay. it was so, so yeah that's all the foils um so the rest of the rares are the same but i want to chunk through because you can see some of the art is a little bit different but also there was one card that was misprinted right which is the fable we just saw off the top but electrode was misprinted we touched on this on the other video um this is actually the the art from the original set right the the base electrode so it was interesting um what i thought was um super interesting about jungle in general outside of um some of the cards we already talked about was it felt to me that jungle introduced a lot of cool collector things um and not on purpose so there were misprints, right? So this electrode was a misprint. I think was there another misprint in the set? I can't remember. Um, um I don't. Yeah, I, I can't think of it. So, so the electrode. Oh, the butterfree. Was, the butterfree. Yeah. Well, so the well, the electrode was a misprint, and then butterfree had a uh, had a D stamp on it, right? Mm-hmm. So it was like instead of of a one, it looked like a D because something happened with the with the the press, and then. Uh, it also introduced uh, like the uh, Ivy Pikachu, yeah, which the first was not edition one, be, yep. yeah, which was not supposed to be in the set. So for people who turn into collectors quickly, like us, we were like, oh my god, there's like I wanted boxes yeah. in the set so badly to get those things. I, yeah, I remember like I don't even remember how we heard about the like the promo, but I remember like after doing it because like when you're sorting cards, especially commons, there's at least for me, I always was just like looking at the number or something like that. And then, well, when you, you, know, chunk, you have, when you when you go when you uh, flip through the through the cards, you, you're just looking for the symbols in the bottom right hand, yeah. right? That's how we sorted like commons in one stack, uncommons in another stack, mm-hmm. uh, rare foil, rare non foil, and then yeah. like later we would go back and maybe like sort through the the commons and uncommons, but most of the time they would just get like chucked into a box yeah. for later. And so I think I, I remember like once whenever we heard about it, like we went through to like find these Pikachus, but we did not ever pull one. Yeah, so we didn't pull one. Um, I can't recall if we pulled uh, a D edition Butterfree. I think we did. I think all of our D edition Butterfrees were pulled. Yeah, so I, I do recall uh, either on eBay or through people that I talked to on forums, I got four. First yeah, edition. I, I think it was I, eBay. Yeah, so I got four of them. Uh, well, I think we have a couple of them left. I think I resold a couple 
after the fact because again at least back in the day it was it was super rare right yeah have those guys and um and i guess that means that's like when they introduced like promos like with yeah. the promo star and stuff right because i think that was the first card of that set so So I'm just chunking through these. Actually, looking at some of these, like some of the like some of the non-foil versions look much cleaner mm -hmm. than the foil versions. I mean, that's not to say that they're any more cool, but I feel like I can more appreciate the non-foils of some of these guys. Not this one; it's pretty boring, but. Um, cool. So that's all the rares. I didn't know. Do you want to go through the Tom's and Uncommons or? I was just going to say, I think the only card that I remember having like much of an impact was, um, Pokeball, I think was a common or something. So just flip through these real quick. So yeah, look at something I was talking about how uh, it was, it was, I mean, it's HP was huge, right? 90 HP, it was a base Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, it only took one to try to do uh, paralysis. So uh, definitely good installs. Everybody's uh, fan favorite Eevee. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the other thing about Wigglytuff too is like if you get Jigglypuff out 60 HP, you can lullaby again, make them fall asleep real quick. Yeah. And I think like at least when we were kids and playing, like I don't think that we even thought enough about like some of those defensive stall tactics because like it's kind of boring you know yeah. you're playing a game you want to and it's pokemon you're trying to like beat the other guy up not just like make him fall asleep and wear him out so yeah 100%. so i stopped on this meowth because i think there was a promo later for this card i yeah i, I think i think we have it in that box and we showed it last time it's the gold border yeah was it jungle specific or no I um i don't remember when it came out I just remember that it came out in those fruit snacks. Yeah. I'd have another Pikachu card, obviously. Yeah, it's a Pokeball. That, that's like the only trainer in the set. Everything's yeah. a Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was a good card. Um, or at least we, we use it in a couple of decks. I don't know if it yeah. considered meta or not, but it was just interesting for those decks that wanted to find a uh, specific card. Um, that completes jungle. Let me see if I can quickly find the uh, the Butterfree and the Ivy Pikachu. Yeah, here's the first edition, which only came in those first edition jungle packs. And then here's just the normal one, which you could have gotten. I think you could have gotten this in an unlimited. No, maybe not. I think maybe they corrected that error ahead of time and then uh, over the uh butterfree is oh here here's stuff so it's in this box um a couple of errors that we have were some uh oh yeah no no uh no symbol symbol ones and then the proper electro. So this wasn't, you couldn't get this in first edition, right? You could only get this in unlimited uh, with the correct art for the electro. And then here we have a couple of the D, oh, it's not focusing well, but that's a uh, first edition D edition Butterfree. Get that there, so. Yep, I think that's all the jungle stuff we have. 